Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a time capsule. So the idea for this activity came about because I was asked to do a webinar and when I was figuring out um, ideas for what to do for the webinar, it occurred to me that due to COVID-19, we are living through a historic moment. And um, one day our children are going to recognize and understand the significance of what we are going through. So I wanted to figure out a way to kind of capture that in some sort of math activity. And that's when I came up with the time capsule. Um, so what I'm going to do today is walk you through how to make that time capsule. Um, we're going to do it in a way that reflects where we are in, this, in history. Um, and we're going to tie in an awful lot of math. So um, it's going to be fun. I uh, do recognize that projects take a little bit longer um, to do than a regular activity, but in my 30 plus years of teaching, I have learned that doing projects with students really packs a powerful learning punch. And so I highly recommend um, that you really do do this um, with, your, um, with your children or your, your, your students. Um, if you are doing this at home, um, with your your child then I also highly recommend that you make your own time capsule right alongside um, your child it's it's much more fun to do it that way and I think that you're really gonna like this activity and you're gonna really want to participate um, in it um, as well so the I do have the uh, written lesson plans for this on our website at familymathnight.com under the Math at Home resources. Um, here you're gonna get the materials that you're gonna need, uh, the vocabulary that we're gonna talk about, and then it, it walks you through each one of the steps. That said, um, I'm gonna offer, a, a, this video is gonna go into a little bit more detail, so it's a good thing that you're watching um, this video. Um, okay, some of the materials that you're gonna need Pretty simple. Um, pencils, <laughs> um, a centimeter ruler, glue, uh, clear tape, scissors. You're also going to need some um, centimeter grid paper. Okay. And um, this grid paper, um, when you print it, needs to be printed in actual size. Sometimes printers um, go to print to fit. And if you do that, these uh, little centimeter squares are gonna be just a little bit smaller. So when you print this, um, print in actual size. Now, if you're able to print and you have um, cardstock, this is a uh, cardstock or a tag board, it's, can you hear that? Just a little bit thicker. Um, you can do this activity on the cardstock. If you don't have cardstock, um, then, and what I'm gonna use uh, today with you is just an old file folder. Okay. We're gonna use this to create our time capsule. Um, it's gonna help make our time capsule a little bit sturdier. So, um, so that's great. All right, the next thing I wanna do with you is go over um, a bunch of vocabulary. Um, vocabulary is much more meaningful if it's used in context. And so we are going to be using it in the context of creating your time capsule. Um, and when you use it that way, um, the learning is really solidified. It makes sense, right? Because you're using, you're applying it right away. So I am gonna cover a whole bunch of vocabulary with you. And we're gonna, we're gonna um, thread that through um, the actual activity. So in kindergarten, students are studying two and three dimensional geometry, okay, or two and 3D shapes. Um, two, I'm gonna start with three dimensions. Um, when we talk about three dimensions, when we say 3D, D obviously stands for dimensions, and those three dimensions are length and width and height, okay? That's a 3D object. You can actually feel things that are 3D. Two dimensions, Okay. Here's my box. Here's my cute little picture of my box. <laughs> Two dimensions is simply length and width. You can't really feel that. It's on a plane. It's on a flat surface. It's a plane. So um, uh, just length and width for two dimensions. The uh, um, time capsule that we are going to be making today, obviously it's going to be three dimensional. We're going to be making a box. Um, but in math, we call the box that we're gonna be making a poly 
tetrahedron. Okay, so um, there's actually, let's talk about, let's go back to 2D for a second, 2D and 3D. In, in 2D, two dimensions, um, there are polygons, and polygons are shapes that are made up of three or more line segments. So think about a triangle, that's a polygon, or a rectangle, that's a polygon. Okay, those are polygons. So whenever you hear gone, polygon, um, it's two dimensions. A polyhedron, when you hear hedron, we're talking about three dimensions, okay? Um, and uh, polyhedrons, here's an example of one. Polyhedrons are made up of polygons. Okay? Um, they, uh, and this one here is made up of rectangles. Can you see that? Okay. Um, this polyhedron actually is called, there's another category underneath polyhedrons, and one of those categories under polyhedrons is called prisms. And a prism is a polyhedron that has two congruent bases. And congruent means exactly the same. So my congruent base here is a um, rectangle. It matches that rectangle. And the base tells you what kind of prism it is. So it's a rectangle. This is a rectangular prism. Another way to determine whether or not it's a rectangular prism is if I took a cross section, that means if I cut it right down there like that, and I opened that up into two sections, those sections would be congruent. And how I do this with students in the classroom is I actually take a block of cheese, like this, so here's my little block of cheese, and I cut it to show the cross sections. Um, I've actually cut it in advance for you, but I cut it right down the center and those cross sections are congruent. They're exactly the same. This is a rectangular prism. So now what I'm gonna do with you is I'm gonna ask you to think about some of these um, polyhedrons that I'm gonna show you. And I want you to, do, to think about whether or not they fall into the category of um, prism, all right? So here's a polyhedron. Is it or is it not? A prism and if you said yes you would be right okay this is a triangular prism see there's the one base there there's the second base they're triangles if I cut this down the center made a cross section those sections would be congruent okay, how about this one here this is this polyhedron a prism if you said yes, you're right again, okay? If you cut this down the center, both sides, both sections would be congruent. There's my base, there's my other base. It's another triangular prism. How about this one? Is this polyhedron a prism? If you said no, you are right. This is not a prism. If I cut this down the center, those cross sections there, they would not be the same. It's a polyhedron, it's just not a prism. This here, the box that I showed you earlier, um, is a polyhedron, but it is also a prism. Um, it's a special kind of prism that we call a cube. So um, it's made up of um, squares, okay? And a square is a special rectangle. Now you'll get some um, young um, students, um, maybe even older students, um, that will um, kind of argue with you a little bit and say um, a square is not a rectangle. Um, but uh, if you go to the definition of what a rectangle is, a rectangle, a rectangle has two sets of parallel side, sides, and it has all it has four right angles. Then a square fall squarely into um, that definition. So a square is a special um, kind of rectangle. This um, prism is a special kind of prism because it's made up of all squares. It's a cube, but it is absolutely a rectangular um, prism. Um, one thing I should say about rectangular prisms also is they have six faces. This flat surface here is called a face and there are six of them in a rectangular prism. Uh, one other thing about this box here. This box was actually made by um, my son when he was in elementary school, and I was in his class doing a lesson on volume. After the lesson, he stuffed this with a little object, 
um, and sealed it. And then he wrote on here, do not open till March 16th, 2016. Well, March 16th happens to be his birthday. Um, so that was really relevant. Um, and then he put this on his shelf in his bedroom and he left it there for 10 years. 10 years, I kid you not, it was on his shelf for 10 years. Um, he actually, I believe, overshot the date, but I happened to be there when he was opening this and he opened it up and he had stuffed it with a little bit of tissue and inside the tissue was a Mexican peso. <laughs> and I said, well, why'd you put that in there? And he said, I don't know why I put that in there. Um, it would have been very interesting to understand his thinking at the time and why he chose that to hold on to that for 10 years. So in our time capsules today, I have a solution to that problem. So we'll get to that in our time capsules. Okay, so um, what I want you to just do now, and you can do this with your students or um, your children if you're doing this at home, is to just glance around the room that you're in and see if you can find any rectangular prisms. So are there rectangular prisms where you are right now? Um, when I uh, was doing this on the webinar, of course, we were um, chatting back and forth about um, what people saw. Um, some people brought up um, the, the top of the desk that they were in or um, a, a cabinet or a chest of drawers. Um, and then, of course, there were books. So here's one um, that, one of my favorites, favorite books, um, but this is in the shape of a rectangular prism. It's got six faces, okay? It's made up of rectangles. If I did my cross section, they would be congruent, okay? Um, so do that. Um, you can even go on a little walk with your kids in your house if you want and, and see if um, they can come up with some other uh, rectangular prisms. And probably if you open up your pantry, you're going to find a lot of them. Um, cereal boxes, granola bar boxes, um, uh, rice boxes, pasta boxes. There's a lot of them in your pantry. And that's really good because um, this is uh, the next part of the, uh, this is actually the beginning part of, of the lesson to make our time capsules. You are going to um, choose one of those rectangular prisms that's made out of cardboard, and we're going to create something that, that we call a net. So a net is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. Let's see if I have a net here to show you. Um, and I don't know where my net went. Um, if you, uh, oh, here we go. So here is a sample of a net. This is two-dimensional, right? Okay. But if I cut this net out and I folded it up on those edges, I would create a three-dimensional object. And in our case, it would be a rectangular prism. So what I want you to do is, and an adult needs to do this, you're going to take your um, rectangular prism that's got cardboard and you're going to slice it in such a way that you're going to end up with, okay, a net, and I want that net to have six faces. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So you're gonna need to cut it carefully. Um, if I just opened up this box regularly, I'm gonna end up with these two flaps right here and these, these guys, but I don't wanna do that. I actually want to slice it in such a way, let me see if I can show you here. Slice it, okay, in such a way where I don't end up with the, that, those other flaps there, all right? So you're gonna cut it here. I use the box cutters to do this. You can do it um, with scissors. Again, um, an adult needs to do this because it can get a little bit um, tricky. So cut it here, cut it along that edge, cut along that edge, you're gonna get this flap. You're gonna do the same here. And then you're gonna cut along this long edge here and that's how you're gonna end up with your net. The reason I want you to do this is because this is going to be your pattern. Okay, for our time capsules. Now those little, um, those little flaps, okay, these little guys, I just um, taped mine down like that to get that out of the way so it looks exactly like that. This is going to be our pattern. Okay, now we get to a really fun part. Um, you are going to find an object and I would like for that object to be six cubic centimeters or smaller, 
and the and, and this here this box actually comes in at five cubic centimeters um, five by five by five um, the reason why six cubic centimeters are smaller is because um, when we create our net that's the size that can fit on here a six by six by six can net can fit um, on here if you find an object and it's larger than that then you can still use it you, you're going to have to get um, more uh, grid paper and tape it together and actually this is a really good math uh, problem to figure out how am i how are you going to tape it together so that your net um, can fit um, on that paper okay but i'm going to do this project using um, this you know um, eight and a half by 11 sheet. Okay. So what kind of uh, uh, item are you going to choose for your box? Well, this is where this time in history comes into play because I want you to choose an item that is reflective of what we are going through right now. Let me give you some um, examples. If you um, have uh, spent an awful lot of time out in the backyard, <laughs> kicking around the soccer ball, practicing your passing. Um, and you've got a little soccer ball like this. This would be a perfect item to put into your um, time capsule. Okay. Um, if you've maybe spent a lot of time in, uh, you know, shooting hoops and practicing your three point shot in the driveway, um, this actually comes from my little Lego set um, and it represents um, the net. Okay. Um, then maybe this is something that you want to put in your time capsule. When I was doing this as a webinar, the participants came up with a lot of really great, great ideas. Um, some of them were uh, a mask, you know, those masks that we're wearing, you'd fold up one of those and put them in there. Um, somebody else suggested um, Top Ramen. <laughs> you could take a chunk of Top Ramen um, and stick that inside um, your um, your, your time capsule if you've been eating a lot of that. Um, somebody else was say, saying about baking. They've been doing an awful lot of baking, so maybe there's something representative of baking that you can put inside your time capsule. Um, with the object that I'm going to put in um, is this. It's a rock. Now let me tell you about this rock. So um, due to COVID-19, we've been doing shelter at home, so I've been working um, from home. And my husband has been working from home. And every day we take a walk around the neighborhood just to get out. Okay. That right there represents um, part of my experience dur during COVID-19 because I would not um, be taking these walks if it wasn't for shelter, um, shelter at home. One of the houses in our neighborhood, um, the kids in this house have collected a whole bunch of rocks and they have painted them. And they have painted them, they're beautiful. Some are rainbows, some have flowers on them, some have polka dots, some have just this beautiful glitter paint. And then there's this one that says blue skies ahead. Then there's a large rock um, in their little rock garden that they created in their front yard. There's a large rock and on that large rock it says, please take one rock and share the love. So I took this rock, I'm sharing the love with you. Um, but I'm also going to use this as my, um, my time capsule object because this is going to remind me of what, of the walks that I went on with my husband every day um, and the fact that the children in the neighborhood created these absolutely amazing um, rocks. So choose, I'm hoping that you'll, you'll choose something that is um, reflective of what we're going through. Um, when my, my older son has been coming over every day to study, and um, I noticed yesterday that his hair is getting longer and when his hair gets longer, it curls and it's been driving him nuts. He's been complaining about it. And I was thinking that for his time caps, he could actually take a little piece of that, cut it off and he could put um, his little um, curly hair inside his time capsule to reflect the fact that he hasn't been able to go out and get his hair cut um, because of shelter at home. So things like that would be appropriate to put inside your time capsule. So the next thing that we need to do is now we're going to get into the nitty gritties of actually making the box. So what you're going to need to do, you've probably already measured your item. Oh, and by the way, when young children are measuring, they're using a ruler for the first time, they often start measuring at the number 
one. And that makes sense, right? Because we always start at number one. But this is a great teachable moment because you could teach them that we actually need to start at that little tick mark right there. And the tick mark to the number one represents that first distance, okay? And we're doing centimeters, so that would represent the distance of one centimeter. So a great learning opportunity for them there. But you've probably already figured out the size of your object because we need to be able to fit it on our grid paper. Um, the next thing you need to do is um, determine, okay, we're gonna start the, e the, the way that I've done this um, in the classroom that turns out to be the easiest for students is that we des start designing the base first, one of our bases, where our object is going to sit in the bottom, okay? Um, obviously, this is too big, but this is just an example. That's what we're going to start with. So we're going to come up with that bottom rectangle. And the way that you do that is just how we're just going to put it on here. Oh, and... Here's another thing. Um, I always turn the paper over. See the dark lines on there? When you're using pencil, these the pencil is really hard to see on these dark lines. So I always have students turn the, the paper over like that. You can clearly see the lines on that side. Um, and we, we design using this side of the paper. That said, let me just use this side for you guys right now. Um, you need to decide what you want the length and the width of your box to be. Keep in mind that you might put a little bit of stuffing, like uh, my son put on an awful lot of stuffing in here. Um, for one peso, it wasn't necessary to put that much stuffing, but you know, he had the box from our lesson. Um, but think about if you wanna put any tissue paper around it, um, um, and you might need to make your box a little bit bigger than maybe the actual dimensions, but think about what you want the base to be, and then how high do you want your sides to go up? And then you might want to sketch it out. This is obviously not to scale, but I want to show you here that my rock came in at six centimeters by five centimeters by a half centimeter. Okay. Um, I decided to make my box, box seven centimeters by six by two. The reason I did seven centimeters was because I want to I put a little bit of tissue paper in there. And I know that I said earlier that you needed to, it needed to be six cubic centimeters cubic centi uh, centimeters or smaller, and I've got seven here. That's because I put my little rock on here and I figured out that with my height of two, I could easily fit seven by six by two on my grid paper. So that's why that is there, okay? So you might need to do, there's a little bit of wiggle room there. You might need to do that as well for your object, okay? Once you've got this part down, I'm now going to show you through um, how to start designing the grid or start designing your net on the grid paper. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do in order to design your net is we're going to um, draw the base. Okay, and the base, remember, is this section right here. Okay, this is where your object is going to go. Okay. Um, uh, when we're done uh, with this. So, um, but before we can do that, we need to consider what the height of your um, rectangular prism is going to be because we need to know where to start drawing the base. So remember, my height is going to be two centimeters. So I'm gonna draw just a little line like this right here to represent that my height is two centimeters and I don't want to start drawing my base over here because then I'm not gonna have any centimeter um, paper left to, to add in that height. So there's my height right there. Now, if you remember, I wanted to make my box seven by six. So I'm gonna count out from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let me draw my line. And then I'm going to, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to have um, a width of six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So right here, so now I'm gonna draw my next line and I'm gonna turn this into a rectangle that is going to represent my base. Okay, there we go. And again, it's easier if we start here with 
um, students. And then um, it's just easier for them for, to visualize this before they get their height on there. Okay, so there it is. There's my base, that part right there. So now I need to add these sections here, okay? That's my height. And you can see I left room for that. So to make to make this go a little bit faster, I'm just going to sketch this out here like this. Okay, there's one. We need four of them. Two. Three. And four. I'm really picky in the classroom. I make kids actually use the ruler or a straight edge to get their lines. Um, but there we go, okay? So my base, and then that's going to be my height. Now I need my lid or my other base, right? So we've got seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, and I draw that down like that. And voila, there's my net, okay? It's got one, two, three, four, five, six faces. One, two, three, four, five, six faces. Beautiful. So the next step would be to cut out your net. But first, I want to jump ahead for a sec because later in this video, I show you this net. Um, and I show you this and mention these red lines on here. Um, but I don't follow up on it. So I'm going to take this opportunity now to explain that these red lines... These are gonna be the fold lines, okay, when we're ready to turn this into your rectangular prism. But first, you're gonna take a ballpoint pen, and I'm using red simply because I wanted you to be able to clearly see those lines, but you are going to firmly press and score these lines. I've obviously already done it, but this is what you're gonna be doing. Press firmly. Um, because when it comes time to fold it, it's going to be so much easier. Practically folds itself when you do that, okay? But now we need to cut out this net. So once you've cut out your, um, your net, okay, it will look something like this, right? Um, I made my lines darker here so that you could see them because now we're going to get into a little bit of math. So make a prediction. About how many squares do you think okay, cover this shape? And by the way, what I'm talking about now is area. And the area is the number of square units. In our case, the unit that we're using is centimeters. So square centimeters cover okay, this shape. So this is the area. We're gonna be figuring that out. So make a prediction about, do you think it's going to be more than 10? Do you think it's gonna be more than 1,000? Um, do you think it's gonna be more than 50? Can we start to narrow that down a little bit? And just keep that little predic prediction in your head. And now I'm gonna turn it to this side because my question now is going to be, can we determine how many total squares there are without counting every single square? How can we do that? Okay, so you might want to ask your kids that. How could we do this without counting every single square? Um, and then they might come up with the fact that, well, if we count out the squares in each one of these rectangles, then we can just add them all together. That sounds like a fabulous strategy. If you've got a kindergartner, you might need to count by ones. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Or maybe they're ready to skip count to 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Or maybe they can do 6 doubled. Okay, um, your first graders and second graders certainly um, will be working on those skills. So if we know that this rectangle here is, has an area of 12 square units, is there a rectangle on here um, another rectangle that's congruent to this one. And yes, there is. Here it is right here. So if we know this is 12 square units, this is 12 square units. Great, we've got two of them done. How about this one here? We could do the same thing. We could count each one. We could count by twos. We could double seven, and we would arrive at 14. Is there another rectangle 
that is congruent to this one. Yes, and there it is. So now we've got these four done. Now we're left with these. If you have a um, third grader or higher, they can use their multiplication facts. Seven times six is 42. Um, or maybe if they're not there yet, can you break this apart into pieces and work that way? And maybe we can use this rectangle right here to help us down here. So if this is a two by seven and we know that's 14, here's a two by seven. We know that that's 14. Here's another two by seven. That's 14 and here's another two by seven. So now we've got 14 plus 14 plus 14. And if you're using number sense, you could go, hmm, 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. And four plus four plus four is 12. 30 plus 12 is 42. And you would arrive at 42 as well. So now we're simply left with an addition problem. We add all of those together. And when you do that, you're gonna get 136 square centimeters. <laughs> and by the way, um, labeling it like that, square centimeters, is attending to precision. We need to make sure that it's not 136 what? 136 elephants? No, 136 square centimeters. Super important to make sure we do that. Okay, so the um, next part is um, we are going to glue this okay, onto um, that, um, that file folder. And you can see I've cut mine out here. Okay, so, and when you glue it on, I want you to glue it on so that the dark um, squares are visible. Don't do it that way. Do it this way, there's a reason for that, okay? And when you do that, you'll end up with something like this. Here it is, okay? Um, I'm gonna get to those red lines in just a second. But now is the time that you get to let those creative juices flow and decorate this. So um, get those colored uh, pens out, colored pencils, crayons, whatever you need, and create your um, uh, rectangular prism, your time capsule. Now, what's fun here is that, I'll show you the one that I did. I did this one. This actually, this net folds up into this rectangular prism this box. Um, and then I wrote on here, do not open till May 5th, um, 2030. It's 10 years from now. Okay, a lot can happen. A lot will happen in 10 years. Um, um, but what I did here when I was designing my box is I wanted my pattern to flow over the edges. And it actually uh, took a lot of thinking, a lot of advanced thinking to make sure that when I did that, okay, that these colors here would match those colors as they went over um, the edge. Uh, got a little bit complicated, but, but it takes a lot of um, thinking in advance. Um, and uh, if you're up for the challenge, if your child is up for the challenge, you can do that. If not, just decorate your box. Um, it's going to be beautiful. And when you're done with that, we're gonna do a little bit more um, math. So now we're going to talk about volume. So now we're getting into um, fourth and fifth um, grade work. Um, the volume is the amount of space that something takes up. So we're going to figure out what the volume of your rectangular prisms is. And we're actually going to come up with a formula for that. Um, I'm guessing you don't have um, centimeter cubes um, with you um, if you're doing this at home. Um, but I'm gonna show you this with centimeter cubes. And this is the reason why I want you to put the, the dark lines out because you can kind of visually see what I'm going to do with those dark lines. But I would fill this box. This, is, this represents one cubic centimeter. How many cubic centimeters fill my box? Well, I would start with putting cubic centimeters on the whole bottom of my rectangular prism. Let me give you the sample here. Here's a smaller box. And can you see there that I've got um, the whole bottom is filled in there? Okay. Um, once I have that filled in, how many do I have? Well, a quick way for us to do this right now is to go back to that multiplication problem, right? Six times seven, I'm gonna end up with 42 cubes on the bottom. And that represents 42 um, cubic centimeters. 
did I fill up my box? Mm -mm. I, clearly, I've got another le le uh, level that I need to put in there. When I add my second layer, how many have I added? I added another 42. So 42 plus 42 is 84. At that point, it will be filled and I've got 84 cubic centimeters filling my box. So now we're gonna start collecting some data. And if you are doing this, hopefully, um, with uh, your child, um, at home, then you're going to have uh, more data than I have on here. You can have another row, um, uh, uh, um, column filled in there. But you're going to record the length, the width, and the height, and the volume of your rectangular prism. And I want the question is how can the length, the width, and the height help you figure out the volume? And when you have more data on here, um, you look for patterns in those numbers and I'll tell you right now that if you multiply the length times the width times the height you're going to get the volume. So volume equals V equals L times W times H. Okay and and there's your little algebra in there. You've just you just discovered that um, that formula is so much more meaningful to discover it that way than just to be given um, a formula with numbers um, to stick in there. Okay, one last thing for this project. Um, in that lesson plan um, is a sheet that looks similar to this. Um, remember I told you my son did not remember why he put a, a peso in there? Um, we're not going to have that problem. 10 years, a lot happens, like I said, in 10 years. And we're going to remember why we chose our piece, our item. So um, you can write a little slip in there. Okay? And here's mine that I wrote. I'll read it to you. It says, um, I chose this item for my time capsule because, and then you get to write, this rock was one of a beautiful collection made by neighborhood kids during COVID-19. And I discovered it on one of my daily shelter at home walks. It reminds me that this too shall pass. And then I have the date on there. So now I'm gonna fold this up. I'm going to put this inside my rectangular, my time capsule. I'm going to take my rock and I've got some beautiful tissue paper here. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm gonna put this in my box, just like that. And I am now going to seal my time capsule. And I am not gonna open this for 10 years. Okay. And maybe um, all of you can open all of your time capsules at the same time. I think it would be a fabulous activity to do together um, in 10 years and to kind of um, bring back, um, re-experience a little bit of what we are all going through together um, now um, in history to remind ourselves of this. Okay. One final thing, if you want to do an extension activity for this, um, there is a link in the um, lesson plan, but also um, um, this is on the website, uh, again, familymathlight.com. Um, it's called the perfect box. It is not this activity. It's a different activity that I've done with students, um, but you can do a cost benefit analysis with your time capsule. So this has the information in there. You just adapt it, but um, it has your um, child or your students, if you're doing this in the classroom, um, figure out um, the cost to make 10 of their boxes that they're gonna to send to Australia. So it has the cost for the, um, the cardstock, it has the cost for the tissue paper, it has the cost for the bubble wrap if they use that. Um, you could use that um, area, okay, the surface, or the, um, the area that we were talking about earlier, um, how to fill uh, the cardstock, how many um, nets can you fill on that, and so forth. Um, and then they figure out um, how expensive it would be to create, to mass produce um, their box. So that's an extension um, if you want to do that. So um, if you do this um, activity, um, I would love to see pictures. My um, contact information is at the end of this video. Have fun.